The EU has launched an in-depth probe into the big Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition proposal. Say that fast five times. So join us for Xbox Deal Countdown. Fate of the Activision Blizzard deal begins. It's NRO Daily. Let's get into this one. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K. Back again with what we call the NRO Daily. This is where we're going to be giving you little snippets of our thoughts and our comments on the latest and greatest and gaming news across console, PC, you name it. All right, so today we're going to be talking about this Activision Blizzard deal because this is some serious stuff. Um, just as a quick recap, the deal um, has been mired in investigation. Um, I believe it was Brazil and somewhere else. They, they've approved of the deal. Um, but the EU is giving a lot of press back on the big $70 billion bill. So with no further ado, let's get into today's story and let's talk about it on the back end. And this comes to us courtesy of VGC.com, where the story reads, and let's do this. Let's make this bigger for the people in the back. All right, there we go. This is EU launches um, in-depth probe of Microsoft proposed Activision Blizzard acquisition, more detailed inquiry, open to mid competition concerns. Story reads as follows. The European Commission has officially launched an in-depth probe of uh, Microsoft's proposed acquisition of the Activision Blizzard um, as expected following its initial inquiries into the $68.7 billion de uh, dollar deal. The European watchdog said on Tuesday that it had opened a phase two investigation amid competition concerns. The commission is concerned that the proposed acquisition may reduce competition in the markets for the distribution of console and personal computers, PCs, video games and the PC operating systems, it said. The commission now has 90 days to work until March 23rd, 2023 to make a final ruling on the deal. It said preliminary, preliminarily investigation showed that the transaction could significantly reduce competition in several areas. In particular, the commission is concerned that by acquiring Activision Blizzard, Microsoft may foreclose access to Activision Blizzard's console and PC video games, especially to high profile and highly successful games, quote, so-called AAA games, such as Call of Duty, they wrote. They continue by saying the preliminary, preliminary investigation suggests that Microsoft may have the ability as well as a potential economic incentive to engage in foreclosure strategies vis-a-vis -vis Microsoft rival distrib distributors of console video games, such as preventing those companies from distributing Activision Blizzard console video games on consoles or degrading the terms and conditions for their use of or access to these video games. It also continues. Finally, at this stage of the investigation, the commission has concerns that the proposed acquisition may reduce competition on the market for PC operating systems. In particular, the commission is concerned that Microsoft may reduce the ability of rival providers of PC operating systems to compete with Microsoft's operating system Windows by combining Activision Blizzard's games and Microsoft's distribution of games via cloud game streaming to Windows. This would discourage users to buy non-Windows PCs. Also continues, the story goes, while the deal has been approved by regulators in Saudi Arabia and Brazil, okay, I knew there were two locations, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority recently expanded its investigation to a second phase. It is in the process of inviting members of the public to share their views on the acquisition before giving its final decision by March 1st. As, a, as an actuality, as a correction to this story, I believe the um, CMA put out a tweet and said that they're done receiving uh those public notices now if this article is referring to people maybe uh, the or cma still going over those public letters and essays that people wrote them please save microsoft let the deal go through let the competition begin or whatever the hell the slogan is um i think they're done receiving new entries uh but i think they're going over the ones that they've already received all right interesting stuff yeah, uh, okay, so 
here's here's my thoughts on the end of all this. Right off the bat, I give the deal a 60, 40% chance of passing, meaning 60%, I think it's gonna pass, 40%, I think it might not go through. Now, people know my background, they know my history, and for full disclosure, in case you don't, again, because I'm not, I'm, I don't run from the tough conversations. If you, if you feel some type of way about my own personal biases, fine, feel free to discuss so in the comment section below. We can have a conversation. Um, I just feel that despite my biases, just off of what I know, particularly about EU and regulations, it may not sound like it because how uh, difficult, <laughs> how difficult of a time I had with, with the word preliminar pre preliminarily, we'll get it together. Trust me. On this end of the mic is 25 plus years of dealing with financial regulations globally. And I can tell you, and I've been telling people, I've been telling my friends in DMs, I've been telling people that I know that are close to information with Microsoft, don't start clapping like a baby still yet because the EU is tough as nails when it comes to this stuff. And a huge deal like this is a one of a time deal, like it's crazy. Like be, me being from the States, me working for a Fortune 500 company and us, or I want to say when I was on the man, the, the, unit management side of things. It was very important for us to take regular classes, um, certifications, if you want to call them, on these rules and regulations that affect things like this globally. And I'm here to tell you that for practice, we put more effort in understanding the EU rules and regulations than we did the ones in the States because they are so layered and they could be so complicated and they are so serious in the penalties. That's just what you had to do. So when I saw what this deal was proposing, when I saw the fallout first and foremost being mentioned by PlayStation and the potential fallout by other rivals, I knew there was gonna be a problem. Now, originally I said the deal had a 70, 30% chance of going through in favor, but I've dropped that down to 6040 because I think Microsoft has slipped up in some of the rebuttal, some of the things that they've said in order to combat some of the language. I, I get to these or a lot of this, the, the, the mumbo jumbo that's been, that has been said um, was looked over by, you know, top lawyers, not just with them, but like if they are smart, they went to lawyers externally to get help, to get counsel, to work on this. That's a normal um, occurrence, by the way, that even if you got the greatest lawyers in the world, you get counsel from an outside team on matters like this, especially something as important as this. All right. So I know that a lot of that mumbo jumbo went through lawyers, but I think what the lawyers were banking on on the Microsoft side is that there would be an extreme amount of ignorance uh, on the delivery methods, what would be affected on the gaming side. Because if you're not a gamer, you're gonna lose sight of this. You know what I'm saying? There's some people that know these laws and regulations that are gamers too, but they're looking at the people that they're dealing with in the EU and they're thinking that they might be a little bit behind the curve. They may not understand the intricacies of this stuff, right? One of the more important things that I think they messed up on is by talking about, you know, we're not powered by Azure when it came to the cloud stuff, you know, but then there's so much verbiage that they are powered by Azure and more evidence just keeps oozing out. I'll get into that later on the cloud side. If you want to hear the cloud implications in this, go over to Cloud Dosage News on YouTube where I'm going to give a cloud version of this. But when it comes to the mainstream gaming side of it, um, I just feel that Microsoft may have been a little flippant and some of its arguments against the concerns of the quote unquote competitors. I'm not saying that everything that PlayStation in particular has said jives, but I, I'm just concerned of the strength of the arguments that, they, that they've had laid out. Um, that's why I considerably dropped my thoughts on this deal going through from 70, 30 to 60, 40, but I'm still in favor as far as procedurally, I'm still in favor procedurally 
of believing that this deal is going to go through. All right. Um, if this deal doesn't go through, I, I, this is me having the tough conversations and saying things that people may not like, but who, but it is what it is. Um, I've been gaming for 35 plus years. I don't need the confidence of other people to make me feel good about the decisions that I make. I think as a gamer, it's better if this doesn't go through to be truly honest, because I don't like the precedent that it sends as a gamer, you're going to have an arms race and I don't want arms races for people to gobble up already established companies. I want an arms race as you plugging your or, or investing your money into people that know how to build games and you provide new experiences. So I'm not big on uh, Microsoft buying Activision for them to gobble up and restrict games that were going to come everywhere anyway. Because look what happened in return. Now you have PlayStation. They wouldn't gobbled up Bungie. Now, now they're leaving some legacy things, multi-plat, but Destiny 3. I, I, don't, I don't expect that to be multi-plat. And, you know, like we see with Starfield on Xbox, I see a lot of those games. The newer ones not being multi-plat when before they would have been multi-plat. So as a gamer, I don't like the restriction that this is going to cause. That's not, this is not the competition I want to see. I want to see games built from the ground up. Like I saw with Xbox in the 360 days where they influenced and helped bring to fruition games like Bioshock, where they help influence and bring to fruition games like uh, mass effect and fallout. Even though that started off as a, as a multi-plat fallout three, that's what I want to see as far as the competition is concerned. We're going to help you fund this company that already knows how to make kick-ass games. But by you doing that, you know, this, you know, there's going to be some exclusivity to exclusivity to us for X amount of time or whatever. I, th that's fine. But to just regularly prohibit something that was normally on everything, including your toaster, just by just under financial means. That's not what I want to see as a gamer. However, I get the move because if you want game pass to get beyond that quote unquote, 15% wall that you've run into that you've reported recently, Microsoft, then you have to keep the platform honest and you have to deliver games that are going to stretch beyond hardcore gamers and attract casual gamers or something else. I've been talking about for years here. Game Pass is not a subscription service that tantalizes casual gamers. I've been saying, you can look at the archives, I've been saying that for years, and hence why they ran into a wall. So on the business side, on the investor side, MM2K gets it. And they're gonna need to put games like Call of Duty in there in order to break through that wall and make Xbox Game Pass be the juggernaut that they want it to be. So many dynamics in this, very interesting to see, even torn, you know, at how I look at this. I mean, my gamer side has more precedent with me than my business side, but I have the experience and I get it. If I'm MM2K the investor, this makes perfect sense. If I'm MM2K the gamer, I don't wanna see it, but you know, I don't know, time will tell. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. And until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.